So uh, can you explain kind of what the difference is between your EV cells here and the, you know, kind of what you'd see standard? Yes. So in general, we at Sona Motors have about 30 patents. Uh, and a lot of them are involving how to get solar power into an electric battery of an electric car. Mm -hmm. uh, and in order to do that, to make the car affordable and to make it for an in industry uh, with a total cost of ownership so low that you get a quick payback, you have to do things differently than what we did in the past. So in the past, we put solar cells. I don't know if you can see them here. Maybe these are better. In the past, you put solar cells under glass on a roof and for cars today you can really only put it under glass on a roof as well that works well on a roof if you only have straight glass but if you have to give the glass a shape and if you want to put the solar cells in a fender in a door in a quarter panel mm -hmm. then it gets expensive heavy um, and you can imagine it's not really a great situation driving a dynamic car if it's full of glass sure sure so Part of our 30 patents is the patents of integrating solar waivers into polymer. We're basically, to our knowledge, the only company in automotive who can do that. There's no supplier out there who can envelop uh, solar uh, waivers into polymer. Mm. And that makes it possible that we can integrate it into, and you can see better here, that you can integrate it into a fender, into a door, into a quarter panel. And what we've done here versus here, First, we decided that all these yellow, uh, sorry, all these silver stripes you know regularly from solar panels, mm -hmm. they're basically taking the power from the solar panel, from solar waiver, and transporting it to whatever source you want to, uh, or receiver you want to consume the power. In our case, we chose copper back contacted solar cells. So here we have uh, copper bank contact for four solar cells and here you can see the two areas where you can take the power off oh, but the, cool. the proof of the technology is not our choice of the solar waivers which we do not produce our capability is to integrate the very brittle solar waivers into an injection molding process with very hot mm. high pressure injection polymer and have solar waivers not break when you inject it and not break in the next 10 to 20 years when you drive your car. Okay. And this piece is proving that it works. And that's one out of roughly 3,000 that we did in that way, shape or form. The reason why this is bent, we have to say that occasionally, is not that sort of it got uh, washed too hot, but it shows the maximum curvature we can actually mm. do on the solar wave. Oh, very so interesting. So when you see it on a fender or something, the way we integrated it in our car is actually conservative even oh, for wow. durability, but you could do a bigger curvature as you see here in the sample. Oh, very and this cool. was again one of 3,000 material combinations um, that we have done with all different cover material for the solar waivers and the injection material. And how many of these are integrated onto the Scion? We have of these what we call half cells. This is a half cell, this would be a full cell. Uh, 456. Oh my gosh. And how did you come up with that number as being, you know, the perfect number for this vehicle? Everything that fit and made sense from wiring it in for the money that it costs. The overall system is not that expensive. It's actually in the low four digits. Hmm. Uh, if you want to integrate this into a mass produced vehicle. Wow. That's one of the reasons why our founders are offering this up to other car manufacturers. That's the reason why we already integrated these styles of solar cells with our also proprietary um, maximum power point tracker technology into buses. We already sure. have solar buses driving since last year. Very nice, very nice. Um, what are we looking at uh, with, with this over here? These are um, maximum power point tracker control units. A maximum power point tracker sounds sophisticated, but we didn't invent this. This is part of a normal solar uh, setup. Oh, excellent. Once you have sun shining on a solar cell, uh, you have to determine how much power do you root when, where. Sure, sure. Uh, if you don't do that, you, you have to have one setting that's super inefficient. So you have to change the setting regularly. And on a roof, you usually have as you know, usually everything directed in, in one area mm -hmm. or sometimes in two areas. And everything that's directed in one area is usually one channel. Um, and then you have to react to the weather. 
uh, where's the sun standing, maybe it's very cloudy or maybe mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. So you have some time to react, it's usually in the minute area. What we have developed with our maximum power point tracker is that it reacts very quickly. It reacts within milliseconds and it has not only one channel or two, but it has eight channels. Mm. That means on our car, we have eight directions where our uh, panels can uh, uh, direct, can face. Mm. Eight directions where the panels can face. Let I'm me show you on the car. Sure. Uh, to give you some logic. So here, so here on the door, you have two sets of half sets, right? The top line above the police line uh, and the bottom part. And this part has a different angle than that part. Mm. And uh, all the ones that are going in the same direction, from the quarter panel, over the rear door, front door, and the fender, they're on one channel. So they all get the same type oh, of sun. Okay, okay. And all the bottom ones are on the same channel. Then the roof's on the same channel, the back's on the same channel, the hood is on the same channel, and so forth. Very so cool. that's how we uh, integrate the solar technology from the outside of the car into the direction of the battery. But that's not done yet. Then it has to go in our onboard charger. We call it the uh, uh, dual charge unit because we also have B-direction capabilities. Yes. And from then it goes into the battery. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Well, hey, thank you so much for the explanation. I really appreciate it.